What's going on, friends? Welcome to another edition of Weekly Brick Sludge. I'm your host, Mel Brown. Let's get right into it. The Marietta Police Department in California has been instructed by the Lego Group to stop adding Lego heads onto their suspect photos. Marietta Police Department Lieutenant Jeremy Durant told Fox News Digital in a statement that the Lego group requested that it stop using Lego heads in their social media posts. The Lego group reached out to us respectfully and asked us to refrain from using their intellectual property in our social media content, which of course we understand and will comply with, Durant said. We are currently exploring other methods to continue publishing our content in a way that is engaging and interesting to our followers. If you don't know, apparently on January 1st, a new law went in effect that restricts how law enforcement agencies in California share suspect photos and mug shots. In the new law, it prohibits law enforcement from sharing suspects photos for non-violent crimes unless specified circumstances exist. Additionally, a new law requires agencies to remove suspect mug shots from social media after 14 days unless in special circumstances. The Marietta Police Department deprives itself on transparency with the community but also honors everyone's rights and protections afforded by the law, even suspects. Now, it's the police department that's in trouble for something that is serious but not so serious, right? Should I say that? Serious but not so serious. Any member in the community could tell you that they don't want to be victimized once or even twice, so they would probably want suspect information that is readily available for them so that they can be prepared, right? That's called prevention, right? But I do get it. People have rights, even suspects. If you're a living human being, you have rights to everything. And so the police department was being creative with their suspects using intellectual property, which is probably very much a no-go. They probably were better off using smiley heads. So Lieutenant Refrain from using Lego products. Use the smiley emojis and you'll be safe. Five good minutes with my friend Jesse, the Dungeon Master. My friend, what's going on? I am over the moon this week. <laughs> Playing D&D a lot. Indeed. How long have you played the game and how long have you been a Dungeon Master? I have been dungeon mastering uh, my critical bricks friends for like over a year. Not much more than that. Um, I taught myself how to play the game before that for almost a year. <laughs> so a couple years. Okay, okay. Do you think that this Lego set is the segue into Dungeons and Dragons and bringing both worlds together? I hope so. This is a good set to um, bring beginners into the Lego Dungeons and Dragons kind of format because you can use the minifigs to be the characters instead of the little painted pewter die cast characters. You can use the set as the arena and it comes with an adventure. So you got to love it. Tell me something about your experience with the new Lego Dungeons and Dragons Lego set. I uh, recently put the set together, the 50th anniversary of Dungeons and Dragons. It's all the monsters, all the players you need, uh, very cool techniques in the castle falling apart and hidden little secrets that are parts of the story in, in the adventure and really cool uh, monsters that are what you need. Have this set inspired you to build other things from the Dungeons and Dragons storyline? So yeah, I've already planned to do a collaboration, uh, Dungeons and Dragons themed with my friends and bring that to Brickworld Ch to Chicago. And it's gonna be a bunch of uh, rooms you know you go through a dungeon and it's room after room of traps and monsters and other types of stories with encounters with the players so i'm hoping my friends in the lego community build their player 
and build a clever monster and we'll put them all stacked side by side and have a, a, a cool scene. We got a little bit of extra time, so I'm going to ask you this. Has that set inspired you to expand on and is it capable to expand on? What are your thoughts on the set alone with the actual D&D play? The D&D set, yeah, you can expand the set easily with some of the other official LEGO sets. You've got the Lion's Knight Castle, you've got the Medieval Town Market, you've got the Blacksmith Shop, and they all fit together around um, to expand the set. Or use your imagination, build your own little castle, build your own little dungeon. And I've already kind of done some room expansions so that we can play the game. We'll get you out here on this. Are you looking forward to the possibility of Lego making a Dungeons and Dragons line? I would love a D&D theme of Lego. Uh, if they can do a Minecraft in a thousand sets or whatever is out there, then why not give us a bunch of uh, themes and monsters from 50 years of content that the lore uh, of D&D has out there to offer, just like a big video game, right? Uh, it's uh, more hands-on and story. I, it fits so well with the storytelling telling techniques that LEGO wants to do and creativity. Definitely, definitely. I much agree with you, friend. It's been a blast actually, you know, sharing that set and actually playing. So I love the fact that you expanded on the in plain sight scene and some other the scenes such as the dungeon or the uh, the basement scene uh, on our play. So you can kind of expand the board a little bit. So I, I definitely love the technique that you've been building. But here, here's something that we have been doing before the set has coming out anyway, right? Um, right. Before the set came out, we've been we you've been actually making Lego boards and and, and adventures home brewed on your own. Yeah, yeah. I was expecting the set to come out and having to home brew the adventure, and uh, it turns out they brought the adventure with the set. But I still want to homebrew some larger scenes that we can do battles in and um, just make universal little battle maps. That's all the time we got for you, Jesse. Thanks for hanging out with me, man. We appreciate you, and I'll see you Friday night. All right. Shout out to Jesse Brick Galaxy for bringing two worlds together. Not only does Lego, but he's a dungeon master as well. Check out his social media page on YouTube if you don't believe me. We've been playing D&D &D with Lego for over a year. So shout out to Jesse for bringing those two worlds together. It was my pleasure to send my man this set because he is so passionate about Dungeons and Dragons. So I was happy to hurry up and build and, and display this set on my channel and then ship it to him so that the Chaos crew can experience live action play using this new Lego set. I'm with you, Jesse. I do hope Lego continues to create more of this line, give us some more adventures, and I love that they brought a standalone ventures too. So I, I would appreciate that Lego would actually continue this line. I think Lego will receive a very good reception once this set hits the shelves. Pass the brick. So I'm sitting at home on a Sunday and I'm looking at the Today's Show, and this kid named Charlie, who has a company called Pass the Brick, receives unwanted Lego. He cleans them, makes new sets of them, and then donates them underprivileged communities or kids that attend the Boys and Girls Club. Charlie now has 40 cities involved in his donation process, and over 1,500 pounds have been donated. Charlie, what you're doing is amazing you are actually making a difference in your community and other communities. If you want to help Charlie make a difference, please reach out to him. I'm going to put his contact information on the screen and in the description. Let's all help Charlie make a difference. Keep doing what you're doing, Charlie. All right, let's talk some Lego brick convention etiquette. Now, I know I've been an offender or one or two offenses, I should say. Um, I'm, I'm not the perfect Lego convention goer, and I'll tell you why. I recently just looked up Lego convention etiquette. And I went right to the first one that I seen, which is on Brickworld. And it's called conduct, right? So I'm going to read some rules from the conduct and then I'll talk about it. So it says, 
under the conduct for Brick World, it says play nice, play well, stealing, cheating, or breaking the law or any rule is grounds for removal from the convention without refund. Disorderly conduct is grounds for removal from the convention without refund. Disorderly conduct includes rough housing, running, riding a skateboard or scooter, among other things. Threatening others is grounds for removal from the convention without refund. Threatening includes a threat of physical violence, stalking, unwanted touching, and gesture violently or sexual harassing signals. If someone is removed from the convention for conduct, Brick World reserves the rights to ban them from future shows for any length of time Brick World deems appropriate. Dangerous materials. No flammable liquids, gases, weapons, or compressed gas tanks of any sort allowed in the event area. Handling bricks. Please respect each other's models. Models may be more fragile than they appear. Some builders do not like strangers or friends handling their models. Please be respectful by asking the model creator permission before handling a model. Videotaping and photography. Videotaping and photography is permitted at Brick World unless prohibited by the panelists or creators. Please try to limit flash photography during presentations and workshops. All right, that's not too bad. And I'm sure I could probably look at another convention and some rules will probably be a little bit different. So that seems to be pretty cut and dry, right? But there's other things that happen inside of a, a Lego convention that are those unwritten rules, right? But it's just the etiquette, and that's why they call it etiquette, right? Some of the biggest offenses that I have, I'm rarely there on the first day of setup. I'm rarely there, and I'm rarely setting up. So I'm a last-minute setup person, right? So that's bad etiquette on my part. For instance, when there's an exhibitor that's setting up, I know enough not to bother that exhibitor because that that exhibitor is focused on setting up their display how you turn the tables I might come off not friendly when I'm setting up my table because I'm focused in on getting my display right but at at a given point that's an opportune person to start a conversation with you because you're focused on that one thing and you're not focused on anything else so they'll stop you and have a full-out conversation for you does that irk you that irks me just a little bit, but I try to give the conversation. I do, I try to give a conversation. Am I mad about it? Yeah, because time is the essence. You're trying to hurry up and set your things up so you can go have some fun. And that's what I try to do. I try to set my things up and then I go and bug other people that are setting up. You see how that works? Yeah, your boy's a big offender that I think I, I become unfriendly, which is, that's not good. I get it, folks. I come unfriendly because I'm focused on setting my table up and that one thing when somebody sees me and they want to talk to me you know I kind of I listen to the conversation but am I really listening no I need to get better folks I do I do and that's the truth like but that's just like I don't know you got you're underneath a car and you're trying to you know change the oil and you got the mailman that comes by and he wants to talk to you and it's just as you get that bolt unloosed and he starts talking, the oil runs right on your face. That's a bad analogy. But if I'm building a six foot tall building and I'm stacking it and I'm engaged in a conversation with you, I'm no longer focused on my table and my building can go crashing. Those are the probabilities that could happen. It's probable. It could happen. Will it happen? Probably not because I'm locked in on building that one thing. And yeah, for those that I offended for not really engaging in the conversation while I was building on my table, I apologize to you. I need to do better. But so do you. If you see somebody engage in their display and they're trying to fix their display, forward them that time alone with that display. Come back to them later. They're not going anywhere. Are we ready to start living in Lego houses? It's actually coming into fruition. So, a writer writes in and says that he spent most of his Friday morning watching a kitchen being hoisted on a crane on top of a 27-story residential tower in Northeast London. As the truck arrived, it picked up the unit and it just reminded him the way that they were stacking these units in place as if they were stacking Lego bricks. So, it's possible that we might be faced with a housing crisis, meaning that maybe the old way of actually building a house becomes more modernized by plastics such as Lego. So there are real Lego houses. So is the idea of building a real Lego house impossible? Nah, not in fact. 
the BBC's James May actually built a residential Lego home using over 800 and 16 million Lego bricks. The house was featured of engineering, ingenuity, and enthusiasm, but the house has been since deconstructed after a bid to sell it to the Legoland in Windsor fell through. But the question is, are materials used to build homes can be replaced with Lego. It's probably very doubtful. Uh, the house, especially one with someone intended to live in on a daily basis would be enormous expense. Surely there's millions of dollars, but your insurance would skyrocket because there's a real chance that the house could collapse or be subject to any types of fire due to the heating and cooling. And also to add insult to injury, Lego bricks aren't watertight as well. So there's something else that you're probably gonna need to ensure that. But more on James May story about his Lego home. James May and about a thousand helpers built a 20 foot tall house on a wine estate in Surrey. And the end result, it was truly amazing and newsworthy, the way of Lego bricks or to create something special. So the completion of this creation only took one week. May reported that Legoland and Windsor reneged on their deal to take this house to the Legoland Park. Legoland ultimately decided it was too expensive to move and it was too expensive to deconstruct and reconstruct at the site. May has set what he thinks should be a new world record becoming the first man to live in a fully functioning house made of Lego. But the plastic brick house and its tragic end has affected him rather more than profoundly. With lurid Lego furniture, a working toilet, a hot shower, and a bed made from Lego bricks, the house was assembled by volunteers. People were really enjoying it simply because the massive piles of colored Lego where they were pushed together. It didn't stop there. May also slept in the house that Friday night with the most uncomfortable bed he ever slept in. He also discovered that the house was not waterproof. The move to Legoland and Wizard fell through. The staff realized it would have cost 50,000 pounds to dismantle and reassemble at the Legoland facility. Quite a marvel that May has created. However, real time situations, Lego houses will probably come to fruition if that right person gets it right. Right now we're missing a few ingredients. Number one, a Lego house isn't waterproof. It's not insulated. So you'll get cold, you'll get hot. So some of those things you need to work out, especially putting the HVAC system into a Lego plastic brick house might cause some fires and it and ultimately would run the bill up on your insurance though that a lego house would look great at a lego land facility it is not practical to live in all right seven years into the hobby and i'm a mock person am i an expert i still don't i don't feel like an expert yet i feel like i'm still learning a lot of stuff and that's and that's okay with me long as i'm learning something at a point that i'm building and i'm not learning and i'm still making mistakes that 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 is a bad break when i first started i used to buy sets just for the parts because i didn't know i was announced i didn't know and I, you would end up spending a whole lot of money on a set trying to get a particular part so then i i found that lego sell parts it's the pick a brick but my experience with that was that i the parts that i bought I had to wait about three months until I actually got it. And by then, I done forgot about what I was trying to make and these parts came in, so I didn't know what to do. I found out about Brickling. Find out about Brickling, and the only thing with Brickling is that you will get your parts fast, but the markup is astronomical. We just do, because you figure somebody has taken the time to actually sort those parts and have those parts readily available for you without you doing any other work. So yeah, you're gonna pay more, but the people already did the job that you were supposed to. All of my orders came from Brickling. At full circle, I am coming back to Lego's pick a brick wall. I'm going to be doing a mock that's gonna be live on my channel, and I'm gonna be using parts from the pick a brick wall to build that mock. So what's the difference, you say? You got Bricklink in one hand, and you got the pick a brick in the other. You can go to the store, and get the pick a brick wall, get some brick off the pick a brick wall over there. Here's the difference, is that the catalog that's online is a lot more larger than the one that's at the store. The store managers at Lego retail stores have a limited amount that they can order to put in the spaces on their wall. They can't grab everything. 
the online has everything except for the retired part. Will it be more costly? Probably so because you will order more because there'll be more readily available for you to order. Do you have to wait a little bit more? Yeah, you probably will. From your order being put in to it's being received and it's being expedited or sorted out into a bag to be sent to you, yeah, you might have to wait a while. But in competition with that, you do have the BrickLink, which is a little bit fast. It's more a private one-on-one -on -one transaction versus a corporation to the consumer. You might, the markup on the prices are more likely to happen with the BrickLink order versus the pick -a brick order. You have to decide what's best for you. So this past weekend, I got to spend a weekend in Orlando, Florida, doing a convention, which was great. I got to catch up with some old friends, met some new friends, and I had just such a blast with meeting the folks down there in Orlando. Man, they showed out. That place was packed, and I met just about everybody from the town. Got to catch up with Ryan from m &R Productions. What was most important to me on that weekend was that I was able to meet an old friend. Now, this person's far from old. He's young, but... This dude go way back as when I first started into the game in 2019. I was probably about two years in at that point. I met his acquaintance at a show in Philadelphia where we both won awards. And he was the honoree of the night. And then time goes on. And um, as you can see, you know, life hasn't been an easy street for my guy here where he has come down with an illness He's in great spirits. He's okay, but he's still fighting an uphill battle, as you can see. But it was good to see my man Samuel Fisher. They come out all the way down in Orlando, Florida to see me. Now, his folks live out there, so it was a surprise for me to see him again because it's been a long time. And so that kind of struck a chord, you know, in your boy dearly. You know, I feel for this guy. This is a guy that is a friend to the Lego community. I got to see an old police friend of mine as well. One dude that I, we both came in as rookie cops together and uh, uh, he, he moved on since and uh, made a life down in Orlando, Florida. And so he brought his family out. And it's funny because right before he made that move, down to Orlando, Florida, he sold my house to me. Brick Convention is on the way up. And I would say that because we have our markers, right? You have BrickCon, you have Brick World, you have Brick Fair, right? Those are our, our models, right? That's what like an A-Fall show is, right? And granted, Brick Convention isn't an A-Fall show. It's a family show, it's a community show. On its way to grow to be that show to go to with multiple locations around the u.s definitely catch one because you can see your local a fall and, and lugs at this event all right folks that's all i have for you today we'll probably try to do better next time you catch us here same time same back channel here's the paper toss catch you next time Welcome back to